Should I go to college? Should I go to bootcamp? Should I go the self-taught route? Are there even any jobs available for web developers or want to be software engineers? I'm 18, I'm 20, I'm 24, I'm 36, I'm 48. Is it too late? Is it time to give up? Should I just quit? To be honest with you, if I listen to any of the YouTubers or people in my family or friends who told me it's too late, I'm not smart enough, you'll never get there, I would have never got to where I am today. So whatever you do, don't let others decide your future. There's always going to be naysayers. There's always going to be something happening. The end of the world coming soon. AI is going to take all of our jobs. You're too old to learn to code. You need a bachelor's degree to get hired. You need this. You need that. It will never stop. But you know what keeps going? Time. Time keeps going. So the time you spend waiting, should I start? Should I try this thing? Time goes by, you get older. But the time you make a decision to try to make that life change, you might have wasted some time that you could have just spent studying and going on your path. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but what I'm saying, if you really, really want something, you will achieve it. I've seen other people achieve their goal of switching careers to web development. I've had people that I met in my own community that looked at me for guidance, which I don't know why they looked at me for guidance, but they went on their own journey and they got hired. And now they've been working in the industry. So when you hear and you watch these videos where they say, don't learn to code, it's a waste of your time, or there's no more junior jobs, or you need a college degree. And you know what? Maybe some of those things are true. But if you look at all the people in history that achieve great things, they all gave their best and they tried. So the only people that are not going to achieve their goal are the people that are not willing to make the commitment and do what is necessary. And I want to take this time to give you my journey and the thought process I had in my mind that allowed me to stay motivated to continue to learn to code and eventually get my first job, my second job, my third job. And now I'm on my fourth job working for one of my favorite companies. So stick around and listen to my story and maybe it'll help to inspire you to not give up and to continue on this journey. And in my later video, I'm going to share with you what I would do differently if I were to start all over again. But in this video, I want to give you my process, how I switched careers and why I never quit. Before I switched careers to finally decide to learn to code, I ran and I operated a mixed martial arts Brazilian Jiu Jitsu school for kids and adults. It was a great gig. I worked great hours. I did what I loved and I made a pretty good living. I would take home about 90K after taxes. Wasn't too bad. And I did what I loved and it was a lot of fun. But doing that for many years, I started getting injured. And I also realized that I wanted to do something a little bit more creative. I wanted to do something where at the end of the day, I had something to show for it. So in my mid thirties, I just decided, you know what? I need to change and I need to try to pursue this thing. And when I told my parents and my family that this is what I want to do, they're like, Paul, you have a job, you're making good money, you could continue to grow here in this field, you could continue to do what you love. And they said, by switching careers, you're going to be taking a huge risk. And that is true. And if you do have a significant other or family and kids, it's not a light choice. At the time, I went through a pretty difficult divorce. My wife at the time was really sick and we couldn't be together. It broke me. It made it really hard because I felt like I had no reason to continue. And I was trying to figure out something to occupy my mind. And so I kind of took this on myself to let me go ahead and do something that will allow me to, instead of spending time in the negative, focus on something positive. And so I just did it as a coping mechanism because I loved technical stuff and I just wanted to do something, to learn something, something that was fun, creative, and I really did enjoy it. And I guess the first point that I would like to make here, if this is not something that you feel you're going to enjoy, if you don't find tinkering with things, and especially when things are broken, you don't get excited about trying to fix them, even though, yeah, it could be frustrated, you know, programming might be a tough sell because you need to be okay with things not going your way. <laughs> they always break and just looking to spend time working on them. The second thing I thought about, yeah, it's true. I am making decent living. And maybe you're in a position where you're not happy with your life or the job that you have and you just want to do something that's going to support your family better. 
I always knew that there's a chance that I might not get hired. I always knew that there's a chance that I'm not going to get my first job. But I took a look at my life, being in the state that I was, feeling depressed. I literally said to myself, what else am I going to do? I can't stay here. It's, it's like it can't get any lower. And so I decided, you know what? I'm already in a point where like any, anywhere is up. And so I decided and started to learn to code and to shorten the distance from the time I started to code to until I got hired. It took me about four years. It's a very long road, very hard struggle. And I think maybe you could get there faster, but it's not focusing on the time and trying to be like, I need to get there as fast as you can. You're going to get there when you're ready. And it really depends on you, how your learning is going. Are you actually able to build things? Are things starting to make sense to you? And for me, for the longest time, they didn't. But every time I felt like quitting, I would always say to myself, if you quit now, the life you had before, are you okay going back to that? Are you going to be satisfied with what you had? And for me, I decided, no, I was not. I was not going to be happy. My only choice was to move forward and keep trying. And I started making YouTube videos to kind of talk about my journey. I started coding. I started working with my friend who was a developer to try to get some extra help. And it's funny because every time we would meet on Sundays, I would literally fall asleep during his lectures. And it was a very painful process. And there was a time where I didn't really think I was going to get anywhere, but I was just committed. I was, you know what? I'm going to do what it takes. I will code as long as it takes. It took me forever to understand JavaScript. It, I mean, I, to this day, I don't feel like I'm the best developer. I kept working. I kept studying. I kept building projects to put in my portfolio. I went on interviews that sucked. I didn't get hired. I thought it was maybe ageism. People like, you're too old. You're too old. You're never going to get hired. And I realized it wasn't that I was too old, it's that I didn't know enough. And you know what? It is true. There might be some companies that are going to say no to you. They might say, you don't have a bachelor's degree. We're not going to hire you. Or they might say, you are too old. Well, they can't say it, but they might be thinking it. You're too old. What are we going to do with an old person? That's the reality for some people. But to me, I knew that for every company that says no to me, there's got to be at least one company that's going to say yes. I tried freelancing on my own, complete failure. But <laughs> while I failed in my freelancing career, guess what I was doing? I was still coding. I was still learning things. And then through all my process of learning, I got to a point where I felt comfortable with React and JavaScript, HTML and CSS, building things. And so I applied to my first job at this company called VersaSuite through a reference uh, that I had. My friend who worked there, she's like, Paul, it's a shitty company. They really suck there, but I think they'll hire you. And I was like, you know what? I don't care if it's a shitty company. I don't care if they have a toxic, which they did, a uh, toxic culture. I, I will take my first job like because I, I want it. I need it. I will do what it takes. My biggest mistake at that company is staying there too long. I worked there for a year and a half. So after my failed freelancing, before getting hired here, I did have another job. So a lot of people like say to me, there's no junior jobs available. You know what? There's plenty of marketing agencies that may be working with WordPress sites or other uh, page builder sites where making websites to their client and they need some basic front-end work done with HTML and CSS, maybe some basic JavaScript. There is jobs available. You might not be getting 100 or six-figure you know, salary, which I didn't get a six-figure salary forever, but you'll be able to at least start working for someone. And so my first job. I don't call it my first job because it was more of a contract role and I worked part-time, but I was getting paid 25 bucks an hour working on HTML, CSS, and PHP sites. Sometimes I had to modify some PHP. So it was front-end developer. It wasn't something that I would write home about and be in the glory, but it's something that allowed me to build my experience, something that I could put on my resume. After that contract role, I was able to get hired this company, Verse Suite, that I mentioned before, which terrible, terrible. And I got hired there as a front-end React developer. And the first day they told me, if you're not willing to learn C-sharp, you're going to be fired. So right away on day one, I started learning C-sharp because that was part of the requirement. But they gave me a chance. And so I worked on the front-end of the application. And once in a while, uh, I would go and make some edits to the back-end with C-sharp and ASP.NET if I found there was an issue while testing the front-end and stuff like that. Right after that, when I worked there, I learned a lot of things. And let me tell you, you will learn 
more at your first job than you do three, four, five years of self-study. The amount of stuff I learned there was amazing, even though the environment was terrible. After that, I got another, like once I left that company, I got hired at a company called Red Hawk Research, where I, it was like really awesome because I really felt, I, I still have imposter syndrome, but that job really proved to me, Paul, you actually could do the work that you're doing. And so at that company, I was responsible for creating a new product. I worked with a UX UI uh, senior designer slash engineer. Uh, he would create all the mockups for the UI and tell me you have to implement this in code. And if I had some struggle or problems, I would be able to go and ask him questions, which was awesome because instead of giving me solutions, he just pointed me in the right direction and let me struggle and figure out my own, which was like a big learning experience. After working there for a year and building the experience, I just by chance applied to a company that I really love. I really love Strapi. If you know me, I talk about Strapi Headless CMS. And I applied and by some miracle, thank God I got hired. There's more to the story and I don't want to make this video any longer than it is. And I'll talk through these little stories throughout my YouTube channel. And I'm sure I already talked it in the past. So if you saw my channel, like you probably be like, oh, I know how you got hired Strapi. That was a cool story. But the point that I'm making is that don't listen to what other people tell you. Just decide that you're going to do something, you're going to put in the work, and you're going to do what it takes. And if you're sitting here right now, because I know there's somebody on the YouTube channel on the opposite side of me is going to come up with excuses. They might say, you got lucky. I'd be like, maybe. And they would say, but you had this going for you. Maybe I did. Or you did this and you did that. But I don't have that. You're literally telling yourself that you're not even willing to try. Listen, let me tell you, and this is my last thing here I'm going to tell you. If I did not have this ability to say, I want to pursue something and I'm just going to keep trying. If it works, I'm just going to try another avenue, but I'm still going to try to get the same thing. I would have never got a girlfriend. I would have never got a wife. I would have never had a beautiful daughter that I have now because I would just give up every chance I had. And if a girl said no to me, great. You're not the right for me. I'm going to go to something else, right? To someone else. I'm going to go move on, try whatever. And it's the same thing with coding. Like the job says no. The job says you're not qualified. Great, whatever, forget it. What can I learn from this experience? Okay, you didn't hire me because A, B, and C. Let me improve those things. Let me try in the next interview. So I know this video went really like long-winded and boring, but I wanted to give you some insight on my journey and to tell you that at the end of the day, the only person could tell you if you're going to get success in your life or not is you, right? I don't have a college degree. I dropped out of school. I had my daughter when I was 19. She's 23 now. I got kicked out of my house. I dropped out of college. There's so many things I've done that were just not good that I think I'm still recovering from. And at the end of the day, the idea of not wanting to go back into the old life for me was a big motivator to just continue forward. So I don't care if you like this video or not like this video. I mean, if you do, you can you know, like, I guess the YouTube likes it. Or you could let me know in the comments your story and your journey, because at the end of the day, we all struggle. We all struggle. I know so many people like in my life that have it worse than I do. And I'm sure your life, you'd be like, man, Paul, if I only had it as good as you did, you're probably right. And I'm sure there's other people that are like, man, if I was only like him. And so at the end of the day, the secret is you. It's the work you're willing to put in the time you're willing to spend, and more importantly, being able to be mindful of the things that you're doing to be able to ask yourself, am I on the right path? Am I doing the things that I need to do? Am I trying to challenge myself by every time doing something that's slightly above my understanding rather than do the same thing over and over again? And then you'll get there. And if you want to hate in the comments, you could hate in the comments. I'm just sharing my story. At the end of the day, I wake up in the morning and I say, thank you, God, for letting me be alive today. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. And I'm going to try my best not to ruin it today. And that's how I live my life. And some people have other motivations, but I'm just a regular dude here on the internet. You could check out my first videos to see that I'm just some random dude. And I'm telling you, if you put in the time and you set a goal, you will achieve it. The timeline is not guaranteed and the actual goal is not guaranteed. But the likelihood of the more work you do and the more you want it, you will get there.
Let me know in the comments if I'm full of it. I don't mind. Uh, but with that being said, love you all, and I will see you in the next video.